Joining us now is Carlisle Group, head of global research, Jason Thomas. So, Jason, what is your outlook Thanks for having broadly? Me. Thanks for being here. What's your outlook broadly for, for rates? What's the view from Carlisle? Well, I think that we've been locked in this period of time where we've had this hard versus soft landing debate. And, you know, I, I think, first of all, the hard versus soft landing is, is ill-defined. There's certainly a wide range of macroeconomic outcomes that don't fit neatly into either bucket. Secondly, there's uh, the question of when the landing occurs. There's no specified time horizon. We could easily be a year from now with the economy continuing to grow, inflation still above target. Would we still be debating this question? I think the real lesson of the past year has been that there's some potential for a more permanent or more enduring uh, upward repricing of capital and, and a longer term period of, of higher rates for a number of reasons. What, like what? Is one of them that, well, first, that the Fed is just not going to be able to cut? I mean, yeah, first and most obviously, you have total spending in the economy that remains above levels that the Fed believes is consistent with its 2% inflation target. Part of that is the consumer. Consumer liabilities are overwhelmingly fixed rate, the bulk of course mortgages. The average interest rate paid on the outstanding stock of mortgages is still 3.6% lower than it was in 2020. So, so there has not been much of an impact from rates on, on household cash flow. Secondly, you have extraordinarily large fiscal deficits, 6.2% of GDP at full employment. So this leads to after-tax incomes of households and corporates. That's about $1.2 trillion larger than we'd expect at this point in the cycle, which also, of course, supports spending, making so, it harder for the Fed to cut rates in the near term. So, Jason, if you're, if you're following along at home and higher for longer is the message hammered over and over again from the Fed, and also it sounds like you're, you very much buy into that idea, should you be reducing your exposure to stocks? Well, I think that there, there's actually a lot that should be encouraging about this. As we move past this hard versus soft landing debate and, and you know, people stop waiting for the landing, you're, you're going to start to see a pickup in capital market activity, which I think has been paralyzed by, by this, this sense of waiting. I'll wait for the landing if I'm a seller or issuer to get top dollar. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for a um, hard landing if I'm a buyer waiting for better prices. So I think that the, the signs of deal volumes increasing, the signs of IPOs, is actually something that should be uh, very encouraging. Of course, there are parts of the market that, that I would say uh, you know, do look uh, you know, pretty expensive, given the expectation that discount rates on those future earnings may be somewhat higher than, than people had been anticipating. Right. Are those areas the ones that everyone talks about being expensive? Is it obvious? I, yeah, I, I think it is. Um, you know, again, as, as you mentioned, there is a lot of defensiveness in some of these, these companies just in terms of the, the sheer volume of cash flows they generate uh, and, and uh, just the, the fact that their, their growth content, uh, generally persists through cycles. Um, you know, however, I do think that people are misplaying the AI revolution because they're, they're really loading up on what you could say is those high uh, AI beta stocks, the most obvious plays related to, to the hardware and infrastructure, when in fact the AI revolution, most of the, the earnings growth and productivity is going to be downstream and accelerating drug and therapy development, accelerating software development. So I think that that's just an area where, you know, the, the hype is real, but perhaps uh, people have not correctly mapped that reality into income statements. Uh, for sure. And I mean, part of that is just the difficulty in timing uh, the delivery of these use cases, which I don't know, is Q1 uh, too ambitious to think we might actually start to see uh, the rubber hit the road on some of those ideas? I, I do think that we have seen already 25, 30 percent increases in, in productivity related to software development. I think we're at the earlier stages as it relates to pharmaceuticals and therapies. But, but I think that there are some use cases that Really, we are talking about a 2024 phenomenon. Much of it, of course, is, is further downstream. And, and again, getting those, that timing right is critically important when thinking about the, the price at which you want to enter those stocks.